if you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you're interested in learning how to find deals before any other real estate investor, even though they exist, don't go anywhere because I'm getting ready to plug you into this very, very secret strategy on finding deals before other real estate investors know they exist. Welcome to the Jay Connor Show. I'm Jay Connor, mostly known as the Private Money Authority, broadcasting to you on this show from Moorhead City, North Carolina, my hometown. And I'm excited to still yet again have as my guest host, co host, Chaffee Wynn from Chicago, Illinois. Hello, Chaffee. Hello, Jay. And hello, everyone else out there. Um, Chaffee, thank you so much for being available to come on the show with me again. Have we been having fun or what? It's been a blast, Jay. It's always a pleasure working with you. Yeah. <laughs> we always have a good time. <laughs> Same here, Chavi. Same here, Chavi. So in case you are new to the Jay Connor show, what in the world are we doing here on the show? Well, we talk a lot about secret strategies for real estate investors talk a lot about investing in single family homes. They need rehabbing, how to get them rehabbed uh, quickly, on time, on budget. We talk about finding deals, of course, as I just mentioned at the beginning of this show, we, for the first time, are going to pull the curtain back and reveal my stealthy strategy on finding really, really hot deals before other real estate investors know they exist. Of course, we talk a lot about funding for deals, private money, not relying on banks or uh, mortgage companies. We talk about selling them fast. So we reduce our carrying costs. We talk about automation. We talk about commercial deals, et cetera. And Chaffee, one thing I really uh, enjoy having you here on the show as well is for the reason is we talk about, you know, mindset, personal development. In fact, um, chime in here for a moment, Chaffee, and, and give the listeners and viewers a little taste of, you know, the mindset stuff that we've talked about in the previous shows. Well, we've started off talking about some of our books that we like to read, some of the uh, influences that we've had. And really it boils down to understanding yourself and your abilities and your skill set and your strengths and weaknesses so that you can take what you share on the show and in your live class, Jay, and really implement it. So it's not just a matter of knowing what to do, it's actually doing it and understanding the process of doing it. And more importantly, when you hit that wall, when you hit that challenge, or when you hit uh, a problem or, or something that um, pops up, do you stop or do you keep moving through? Do you get around it? Do you get under it, through it, over, whatever it takes, right? And, and that's that, um, that mindset piece. That's that, uh, the gray matter between the ears moving you forward. So that's why we talk about it here because if you get that down, if you understand that piece, then you can get through those challenges and you can make that deal happen. And that's where you succeed at. Exactly. You know, uh, there's a bridge between knowledge and implementation. Exactly. And uh, so, so that's why, folks, that's why Chaffee and I include the the personal development mindset piece. You know, as we've said, until you own the real estate between your ears, you may not ever own any real estate as in dirt, right? So, Chevy, before we plug them in to the finding deals before other real estate investors, let's ask folks, if you are viewing us on YouTube, please subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the information that we're coming out with. Also, give us a thumbs up and uh, and like like the um, like the video and also we'd love to hear where people are uh, tuning in from so in the comment bar if you're watching on youtube uh go ahead and put hi you know your first name and what city and state you're from and if you're listening on itunes subscribe rate and review subscribe rate and review so chaffee before we get into this show's topic let's go ahead and plug people in to uh what we promised Mm -hmm. So we've got a free online class, folks, a free online class on demand waiting for you to go and watch and take notes and learn about this secret strategy. On the show today, I am going to give the 30,000 foot view. But if you really want it step by step and diving deep, here's where you want to go, folks. Go to www.jayconnor. And if you're listening and not viewing, that's an E-R, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash foreclosure podcast, all one word, jayconnor.com forward slash foreclosure podcast. 
So Chaffee, let's go ahead and jump in. So what are we talking about today? Well, Jay, you teased about it a couple times. So I think uh, you should really talk about how you find deals before <laughs> anybody else does out there. So <laughs> well, we dive right wow. into that. <laughs> you know, you must have ESPN because you read my mind, right? So here's the deal, folks. Carol Joy and I, we have been investing in single family houses here in Eastern North Carolina for the past 15 years. A little over seven and a half years ago, we actually started training real estate investors or new real estate investors how to do the business like we do. We do 25 to 30 uh, live events a year. One reason I have Chaffee on here, folks, co-hosting the show with me is because Chaffee is at all of my live events. He's my lead coach. He does free one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions, you know, at the live event. And so Chaffee gets to meet all of the attendees and my students that come to the event and he gets to hear the common questions. By the way, Chaffee, that reminds me, speaking of free strategy sessions, at the end of that online class that we just gave out, jconnor.com forward slash foreclosure podcast, they will be able to claim a free strategy session with us one-on-one, -on -one, of course, over the telephone. So that's another reason y'all want to go watch that free online class folks is so you can take advantage of the free strategy session that you learn how to claim that at the end of the uh, class. But anyway, as I said, we've been investing for 15 years and here's how I started out. Carol Joy and I, we first, hired our real estate attorney to learn about the uh, foreclosure, the way it works in North Carolina, by the way, folks, <laughs> and y'all excuse my telephone ringing, but I'm right here in my office. So the telephones ring. So, you know, there's one piece of advice I give people to have, you've heard me say this, and that is one way you can learn about how the foreclosure system works in your state that I don't recommend is, Stop making your mortgage payments and you'll learn very quickly how the foreclosure process works. But I don't recommend that way. So I hired my real estate attorney when I started out to explain it. I went to the clerk of court at the courthouse and I went there totally humble, not pretending to know anything about how the process works. And I went there with the mindset, since we're talking about mindset of serving other people. I'm, I'm not coming there this process has not gotten anything to do with taking advantage of people. This system is about, and this, and this, and the way I do the foreclosure business is coming from the perspective of having a servant's heart. In fact, when myself and my team talk to a potential seller, the owner of a house that is, and they're in foreclosure, then the first thing we ask them is, do you want to keep your property? Do you want to keep your house? And if they do, of course, we tell them we're not attorneys. We're not, you know, uh, I can't give you any legal advice, but I can give you some experience as to how you might could keep your home. So, and there's nothing in that, in, in that for us, you know, if they do that. So this system we put together is we started 15 years ago and Carol Joy and I put it together and we've been using it ever since. Of course, we've t tweaked it, improved it but it accounts for 25% of the deals that we do. So the system itself, Chaffee? Yeah, Jay, I, uh, I believe uh, I've heard you talk about there's two main components of the system. So you want to share what those uh, two main components are for everyone? Sure, sure. So there's two categories or components. Your word's better, component. There's two components that make the system work. First of all, there is the tracking of the foreclosures. So that's that's the first component. We got to track them. All right. The other component is the marketing or the direct mail. All right. So when we started out 15 years ago, Carol Joy actually herself went to the courthouse. Now I told her from our meeting with the real estate attorney, I told her, here's the information that we need to get on every file. When it's, so in North Carolina, it's in the, it's in the clerk of courts area. And of course it's called the special proceedings room. All right. It is public record. 
So everyone has access to it. So we decided what information that we wanted, okay, to track and and to keep current, all right? And so Carol Joy put all that together. Now, a few years ago, Carol Joy didn't have to go to the courthouse anymore. We hired a courthouse assistant that actually goes to the courthouse for us. And some folks will say, I don't have the money to afford to, to hire a, a courthouse assistant. Well, our average profit per deal now is over $60,000. You know what we pay the courthouse assistant to keep all those files current? A whopping $75 a week. So, you know, in a month's period of time, who would not be willing to trade $300 a month for sixty some thousand dollars in profit, right? That's not a bad deal, Jay. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good ROI, return on investment. You know, Jackie. The other component is the marketing of direct mail letters. So that was my piece that I put together, and of course, we've improved those letters since fifteen years ago. But here's what's crazy: we get a unbelievable fifty-seven percent response rate to these letters. That's cumulative. So some will respond to letter number one, some will respond to letter number two number three, and there's eight of them. Of course, when they respond, we stop mailing. Now, let me be totally transparent, Chaffee. When I say a 57 response rate, a response does include vulgarity, okay? So, <laughs> so yes, some people do not appreciate the letters or the offer a solution to their difficulty, and they'll say, you know, take me off your list in not a very, very nice way. But the, but the percentage of those responses are very, very small. So those are the two categories, tracking each file, what's the current status, you know, when's the hearing date, when's the sale date, uh, and the letters, you know, mailing those out. And so, uh, and we've automated that. I mean, we have a courthouse assistant getting the information, and we have a lady that, that manages mailing the letters out, okay? So the, the whole process is automated. I mean, even down to when they respond to the letters, it either they have a choice of going to a um, 24 hour recorded message hotline or they can speak to live to, you know, one of our answering services that has our script and et cetera. But those are the two, those are the two main categories. So um, you've broken it down to actually five steps for your system. So let's, uh, you know, on, on the show, let's go ahead and share what those five steps are. So this, the listeners can, you know, just follow the five steps as they go through. So what, what's that first step? That you do. Yeah the, first, yeah. the first step is get the foreclosure list and maintain it. So again, folks at the online class, y'all can go, you know, watch uh, when you're through with the show at jconnor.com forward slash uh, foreclosure podcast. I'm really going to go into details, but here's the overview. Step number one, Chaffee is get the foreclosure list and maintain it. So on the, since we don't have time here on the show, on the online class, I'll go into detail about what kind of information you need to get at the courthouse, what kind of information you need to track, and et cetera. So step one, get it and maintain it. And we track them. We track these open files until they are closed or dismissed. So even when people file bankruptcy to you know stay the foreclosure process, we still track them because Chaffee, unfortunately, as you know, even after people uh, file for uh, um, bankruptcy, unfortunately, most of the time, they do not keep the monthly payments that the judge put together. And then the house comes back up for sale, you know, on the courthouse. Right. Steps. Usually the bankruptcy is a foreclosure, uh, is a stalling process just to yeah. keep them in the house a little bit longer. So exactly. Uh, exactly. What's step two, Jay? Yeah. So you got the list Step one. Now, step two, now we're going to market to the motivated sellers. And that's where the eight letter direct mail campaign comes in. And so, again, starting out, we, we did those letters ourselves. And, you know, if it's a new real estate investor or new to this process, you can do the letters yourself. But it's very, very easily, you know, automated. So these eight letters uh, you've refined over the years, though, correct? I mean, it wasn't just uh, you decided to sit down and write eight letters and it yeah. worked, right? <laughs> so, okay. Actually, I started out with one letter, <laughs> <laughs> but but I but I learned quickly that really part of the magic 
in marketing is sequential mailings. And so, so of course, so, you know, I was only getting like a fourth of the number of responders. I was missing out on three fourths of the right. people responding. And of course, not only do sequential mailings work, no matter what business you're in and you're wanting to promote these letters, each letter is now closer to their hearing or sale date. So as these letters are going out, their motivation is getting higher to do something. Right. To do something. Um, so, so yeah, the magic of the eight letters gets the result. So uh, moving on then in the interest of time, what's, what's step number three? Yeah. Step number three is now they respond. They okay. respond. You negotiate, you know, you, you have a conversation with them over the phone and, and, you know, you talk about, you know, are they wanting to sell their house, et cetera? Do they need help with moving expenses? So you negotiate the deal. That, that, that's the step three is negotiating the deal, you know, go, go to the house, you know, view the home as the repairs. So you're going to, in step three, you're going to use my analyzer software as to figure out what's the most you can offer on the house. And I will tell, you know, I'll tell our viewers and listeners here, a lot of the time people that are in foreclosure will sell their house for what they owe. They will sell their house for what they owe just to be done. Yeah. So get the foreclosure list, market to them with a direct mail campaign and negotiate the deal. Awesome. Uh, what's, what's step number four? So step number four is get it under contract. All right. So control the property, get it under contract, get the offer to purchase, you know, depending on your exit strategy, are you going to get, you know, use an option, you know, uh, to purchase, or are you going to use an offer to purchase? Most of the time I use an offer to purchase because I'm going to want to own the house. Okay. Uh, there's multiple ways to control it, multiple ways to buy it. You know, we should do a, we should do a show Chaffee soon on buying subject to the existing note. Because we probably have a lot of viewers and listeners that have never heard of how you can control a property without having to use private money, buying subject to the existing note. So control the property, you know, get an option, get it under contract, et cetera. Awesome. And then uh, step number five then. Yeah. And the final step is now once you own the property, you've closed on it uh, or you're controlling it. Now you have multiple exit strategies. So. You know, you can wholesale the deal, which if viewers and listeners, if you don't know what wholesaling is, that's simply controlling the property and assigning your contract to another real estate investor, getting an assignment fee. And now you're out of the deal. You can wholesale it. You can, you know, keep it and rehab it. If it needs rehab, you can sell it on rent to own. So you have multiple exit strategies to choose from. And I go into those as well in detail on the online class that we just gave out, Chaffee. Awesome. And so, Jay, real quick, just to tie it all back into private money, where can you use private money in this process? What what steps can you use the private money in? Sure. So some owners will not sell to you, yeah. <laughs> subject to the existing note. They won't let you control the property on buying it on a lease option, for example, or an option. They 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 want they want and word and some will not sell to you for what they owe. They want more. And what they owe. Now, I will tell you, since they're in the foreclosure process, I'm not going to give much money over what they do owe, because what we will tell sellers, Chaffee, when it goes to sell at the courthouse steps, how much money is your lender going to give you? You know, right? Lender's not going to give any money. So whatever money I give you, and and, and it's like, and again, I'm not trying to take advantage of people. I, I want to help them, and I do. I'll, I'll help them with their moving expenses or, or whatever, but. Uh, if they will not sell subject to the existing note, then I use my private money. Use the private money. Now, you could use private money even if it's a subject to, if it's below the oh, threshold, correct? Absolutely. And I do that a lot. So let's say I buy it subject to the existing note, which, by the way, folks, which simply means in a nutshell, when we buy a house subject to the existing note, we buy the house, the deed or the title transfers into our entity. All right, our LLC, our land trust, whatever we're using. And the mortgage, the current mortgage stays in the seller's name and we agree to make their payments. 
until we have a cash out buyer. And, you know, the question when I first learned about subject two, not to get into subject two, but the first question I had was, who in the world is going to sell me their house and agree to leave the mortgage in their name and me make the payments? Well, the answer is a motivated seller <laughs> that wants debt relief, you know. But yes, I'll buy a house subject to the existing note. Then I'll get private money from a private lender. And folks, if you don't know what private money or private lender is, just go listen to the four previous shows. <laughs> we talk a lot about private money in the four previous shows. but I'll get like, if it needs rehab or I need some carrying costs or marketing, you know, expenses covered, I'll, I'll get 25 or $30,000 from a private lender to, and I'll give them a second mortgage in, in, a, in a junior lien position. And so I can have a, an existing mortgage in place and then the secondary mortgage. So I'm glad you asked that question. Again, folks, for the detail, of this foreclosure system, just go to the online class and it's in the show notes and as well. Chaffee, those are the five steps from the 30,000 foot view, but we're about running out of time as we always do. What I like to do is, as we said, talk about some mindset, personal development. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit, I'm just going to shoot you from the hip, Chaffee. All okay. right. <laughs> so here, here's my question. In your experience, mm -hmm. And of course, uh, y'all, I mean, Chavi's been a real estate investor. What year did you start investing in real estate, Chavi? 2002. 2002. So you've been doing it a long time as well. From your experience, especially for like a new real estate investor, what emotional challenges or what fears or what roadblocks might a new real estate investor be thinking about doing their first deal, their first foreclosure deal? And what's the best way for them to overcome that? Well, Jay, that's a big question. <laughs> I know. And, and we've got three, we've got three minutes. <laughs> three minutes. <laughs> well, let, let me uh, um, I, I, let me break it down to two things that I think that are that are, um, are critical. The first thing that comes to mind is people when they're first starting out tend to overthink things. They tend to overanalyze things, and so they take no action. We call that paralysis analysis or analysis paralysis. So they they have the system, they have this process, they have any something and they, they crunch the numbers and it takes them two weeks to look at one deal when the real investor, somebody like you, Jay, can take a look at it in you know, five minutes and figure out this is a deal or not, right? And so you're looking at you know multiple deals and the time that it takes them to look one deal. And by the time they figure out, oh, this is a pretty good deal, somebody else already has the deal. Right. So analysis paralysis. And so that that brings up the, the key of using a system, you know, a system like your foreclosure system or, you know, a process that you've put together that walks them through step by step so that, you know, your, your software, right, that analyzes it for them so they don't have to think about it. They just follow the process. And that's that's the key for a, a beginning investor is just following that process. And as I mentioned, the second thing is using a system. Right. And when you have that system. And uh, you're working with somebody that knows what they're doing. They have a coach or mentor like you, Jay, right? Um, then you can use that system, ask any questions to your mentor or coach and do the deal quickly so that you're not sitting around paralyzed with this analysis process um, and you're moving forward. So uh, that's what I would recommend is follow a system, get a mentor or coach that's going to help you use and implement that system and then take massive action. Awesome, Chavi. Uh, you answered that a lot quicker than I could have because <laughs> that was like a, a 30 second question for a one hour answer. So, <laughs> That's well, Chaffee, we need to call this show a wrap. We are out of time, but um, uh, parting comments, parting comments, parting comments. Like always, I said, if you like what you're hearing, you know, rate, subscribe, rate, comment, uh, thumbs up, all the above. And uh, as I mentioned in the last show, uh, take action, right? Uh, go to the free online training, um, learn more, and then start implementing. It uh, really doesn't put any extra money in your pocket. If you, all you do is listen, listen, listen all day long and don't do anything. So take that next step, listen to the class, get enrolled in the strategy session, and let us help you move forward. Excellent. Chaffee, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to join me here on the show. And folks, as we've said, go to www.jconnor.com forward slash 
foreclosure podcast. So here's to seeing you all again on the upcoming show. If you really want to learn uh, more about Chaffee and myself and why we're qualified to be delivering this information to you, go back a few podcasts and, uh, and you'll hear all the, all the background there. So again, thank you all for listening and viewing. And until we see you on the next show, here's to taking your business and your real estate investing and your mindset to the next level. Bye for now.